I want to speak today on the subject, your word is a lamp and a light. Passage that most of you, if you've been in church very long, you're familiar with Psalms 119 and verse 105. One of the very popular verses sort of has the popularity of thy word have I hidden my heart that I may not sin against God that you find in verse 11 of the same chapter. But Psalms 119, verse 105, would you stand with me in honor of the reading of God's word? The Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I'm afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I've not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I've inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. Heavenly Father, speak in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Your word is a lamp and a light. The Bible, God's word, is indispensable to the believer. It shines from above, it shines within, shines around and it shines ahead of us it helps us to avoid the hidden snares and pitfalls of the world improve your vision use the word as a lamp to your feet and a light to your path Warren Wiersbe made this statement about this text he said the word is a light that shines from above just as the Sun is the center of the solar system Likewise, God is the center of our universe through his word. 1 John 1, 5 says, This is the message which we've heard from him, declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. He's the light of the world. Wiersbe said, The word is a light that shines from within. He works in our hearts through his word and the power of his Holy Spirit. I have a awareness this morning I am a speaker, a preacher, a proclaimer of the Word of God. However, without the light of God's Word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit of God, people don't get it. God has to turn the light on. Listen to what Psalms 119 and verse 130 says about God's Word within. The entrance of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. It means that if you're here without the Word of God, if you allow the Word of God to come in, He will give you light upon the decisions that you stand in facing. One of the great texts that was penned by the, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In other words, the gospel is hid. Those who need it can't find it. The Bible says, whose mind the God of this age has blinded who do not believe. Lest, here it is, the light, the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus' sake. For it is God, listen to this, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who is shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What he's saying is you can't get this message unless God gives it to you. We need the light of God's word and we need the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit of God. If I had someone with me this morning that needed to hear from God, I'd be praying right now as this pastor's preaching. Oh, God, turn the lights on. Remove the blind shutters from their heart and from their mind. 
The word is the light that shines around us. Satan, the world system, the flesh, and other pitfalls surround us. But God's word is shining around us. The psalmist said in Psalms 43, 3, Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. The writer of Proverbs, Solomon, in Proverbs 6, 23 said, For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. And then lastly, Wearsby said, The word is a light that shines ahead of us. In other words, it is a prophetic word. It opens up the future so we can know that our hope is secure. It is the Bible that tells us of a place called heaven. It is the Bible that warns us of an impending judgment on unbelievers in a place called hell. Matter of fact, you can't believe in heaven without believing in hell. Jesus said more about hell than he did heaven. For every time Jesus mentioned heaven, he mentioned hell three times, and he did it in the Bible. That's the light of God's Word, and it's shown in the face of Jesus Christ. Listen to this prophetic word, 2 Peter 1.19. And so we have the prophetic word. That is a word of prophecy about the future. It foretells the future. We have this prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light, as a light. This world can be awfully dark, but yet Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And the Bible also says that we are lights in this world. And he's given us the word to light our way. And so he says, which we do well to heed is a light that shines in dark places. It shines into that dark heart. It shines into that dark nation until the day dawns. And the morning star rises in your heart. That's Jesus Christ. So with that in mind, let me talk a little bit about the word being a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God's word calls for illumination. Isn't it amazing what God has done with light? Remember when he was leading the children of Israel in the wilderness? How did God lead them? At night, a pillar of fire. In the day, a cloud. God has always had something to lead us with. And so if they wondered, it was because of unbelief that many died and their carcasses were buried in the wilderness. God gave them illumination. And God has a pillar of fire by night in our life, and God gives us a cloud by day. Now, there is a contrast, to say the least, in the text. The Bible says that God's Word, that is my Bible that I got up this morning and studied for 45 minutes devotionally, that I do every morning. This Word, God's Word, the Bible, is a lamp to my feet. I want you to know that I, I stand where I stand today as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are y'all listening? Because of the word of God, the lamp. I'm pastor of First Baptist Church Woodstock because God's word was the lamp that led me to this place. Let me contrast and show you the difference and try to illustrate a lamp for night and a light for day. This is a replica of a lamp from the first century. First century. Oil was placed down in here. One of my deacons from Tennessee saw this this morning, came in singing, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. I said, no, that's not the song we're going to do. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my path. Now, can you see that small lamp? If I were to light that right now, we'd have just a little bit of light here and a little bit of smoke over here. And in the first century, when it was very dark at night, only the stars were the only luminaries to light the night. A person could hold that in their hand and they also placed these in their houses in strategic places to light the room. And you know the reason they turned them on in their rooms is because light and darkness cannot coexist. And so if the light is on, the darkness is expelled. And so they would take these at night. Maybe they would hear someone outside and they would walk. But would you not agree with me that if I didn't have this spotlight on me and I had this small lamp, all it would do is show me where to place my foot next. Hear me carefully. You're here about to make a decision. Those of you that are in your 20s will make some of the most important decisions of your life soon. You'll decide where you'll go to college. You'll decide what you're going to study. It'll be in these 20s that you'll decide who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. And to think that God's Word is not a lamp 
to light your feet and, and to make it clear as to which direction you are to go. Isn't it amazing that God's Word is a lamp to my feet? I've got a lamp, and the emphasis is not my path. I'm not looking way out there ahead of me. I'm looking at my feet. I remember when Janet and I were sitting in the pews where you are. I was in my 20s, 20, 21, 22. And I, the preacher would preach, and I was a serious student of God's Word. I studied my Bible every day, read commentaries, went to Sunday school, went to church training classes, uh, served in the choir, worked with RA boys, went to early morning prayer meetings, went out every, every week and shared my faith. It was just that I weren't just trying to be busy. I was being obedient to God. And I remember I used to sense that maybe God was calling me to do something, but I didn't know what to do. So I took God's word, and God's word became a lamp for my feet. So you know what I'd do? I could just take one step. Now look at me. I can see about the first five or six rows here. Beyond that, all I can see is the color of your outfits. In the very back area, as best I can tell, there's nobody back there. Over there, there's no one in the balcony. I can see no one. They're there, but I can't see it. God has never let me know what all the steps were. The Bible teaches, New Testament theology, we are to walk by faith and not by sight. When I finally took a step one day and went forward and told Mr. Gibson, Mr. Gibson, I'm not sure, but Janet and I are sensing that God is calling me into ministry. I was a high school dropout up until the time I came to Christ. No purpose direction in life. I, I didn't excel in school because of the abuse of alcohol from the 8th grade until the 11th when I dropped out. But all I knew is this is what I sensed God had me to do. So I took a step and went forward. So Mr. Gibson, believe God's calling me. Mr. Gibson says, Johnny, I want to help you. My wife and I will take you and Janet to a little Baptist college we attended. We don't know if it's God's will or not, but we'll take you there. So as the word serves a lamp to our feet, we left that altar, are you looking at me? And we took a step over to Shelby, North Carolina to a little town called Boiling Springs and went to Gardner Webb College. And when we got there, we began to say, this is where God wants us to be. And so we got into school. And after I'd been in school and started preaching around a little bit, somebody began to talk about me and there was a little church called Livonia Baptist Church and they said, we've heard you preach and we think you'd make us a good pastor and I took the next step. And I have, I have lived my life thus far by the word of God being a lamp unto my feet. And I'm telling you the stupid decisions that I have made in my life, and I won't speak for you, have been when I have not been willing to take serious God's word under God. What is it ever going to take to get to the place that God's word becomes a lamp to our feet? God is leading us. It's a lamp to our feet. I'll tell you what I found that the lamp will do. It'll light the sinner's path. I'll tell you why I'm, I'm a Bible preacher, a gospel preacher, because John 1, 9 says, that was the true light, Jesus Christ, which gives light to every man coming into the world. No one will ever stand before Almighty God and say, I, I never had any light. God showed you his light in his creation. God showed you his light in your conscience. God is showing his light to the nations through Muslim Bible Day, through you going as missionaries and making it known. God has done it through his works. He is making it known. It's a lamp for the sinner's path. It is a lamp for the saint's path. It leads me to Christ. And how did I come to Christ? I came to Christ by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And it was a step of faith when I stepped out and said yes to Jesus Christ. Janet said to me one time, said, you said yes to everything else. Why don't you give Christ a chance in your life? What a rebuke. But then he moves from a lamp for night, and he talks about a light for day. His word has not only been a lamp for my feet, but it's been a light for my path. See, a light on the path shows us the direction in which we're heading. Even when God gives me his word as a light to my path, I can't see the bends in the road. I can't explain everything that I'm going through. David, I don't understand why cancer. 
He puts a light to your path and you're, you're able to take the light of his revelation, the prophetic word, and know that you, you feel like he's got a ministry for you, but if he chooses to end it, uh, you don't know yet because you haven't been there. There's a part of the road I haven't traveled. The, the light that God gives us, let's just talk about the sun. It's the brightest light that we have. But you know what God gave us? Number one, he gave us eyes that could only see so far. And just for the record's sake, mine don't see quite as far as they used to. Number two, he's given us horizons. And if you'll look far enough on a flat land area, the sky and the land meet, don't they? So a light, no matter how bright, will not show us all the twists and turns ahead in the road. But it will give us a general sense of direction. Listen to what Solomon said about the path and light. In Proverbs 4.18, he said, But the path of the just, that is the person that's saved, is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto that perfect day. And that's the day when Christ comes back. But he contrasts it. Listen to the contrast in Proverbs 4.19. So if you're not a Christian this morning and you're trying to live life on your own, you're getting ready to make major decisions, you know what, hey, hey, you know what's best for your life. And if you don't believe you, just ask you. And could I be so bold as to say this morning, how's it going? Partner? Partnerette? The Bible says the way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. I don't know what's wrong. I mean, I thought this was the one for me. Oh, I believe this is where I ought to go. I don't have money. To, I mean, it's just you're in a mess. And, and what you're doing now, you're saying, what's this all about, God? Billy Graham's daughter was on 60 Minutes not long ago. They thought they had a good question for her concerning 9-11 and concerning Katrina. If God is such a loving God, why would he allow these disasters and catastrophes to take place? She said, oh, I'm not real sure. I don't know that I can speak for him, but I will try. It could be that when we took the Bible out of the public school and told God to get out, to mind his own business, when we took the Ten Commandments out of the courtrooms, when we pretty much just said, shut up and leave us alone, he may have answered our prayer. When we no longer allow, and it's one thing to say in a nation that is becoming pagan by the moment, that we don't follow his word, but ladies and gentlemen, when we no longer allow his word to be a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, So the Bible does not unfold the whole map of life before us. And by the way, can I say something? If it did, it could be rather terrifying. God was going to use a man to become the father of the Hebrew race. He started with a lamp. Uh, Abraham, I need you to leave the Ur of the Chaldeans, and come to a land which thou knowest not. Now, wait a minute now. You may just say, well, he's going to move, and he's going to do more than that. He's going to leave, he's going to leave his parents. He's going to leave his shelter. He's going to leave his security. Well, if he's going somewhere he don't know, undoubtedly it's a lamp leading his feet. Abraham, where are you going? Not sure. It's one step at a time. He's just sort of showing me one step at a time. But then when he got over there, and he began to work in his life and grow him in his relationship and began to tell him that he had created all the stars and had named them and asked him to count them, began to show how magnificent he was. Then he began to say something like this. Uh, Take thy son, thine only son, and offer him on Mount Moriah. God didn't start with, hey, Abraham, take your son. No, he said, Abraham, take a step. And here's a good word. God orders your steps and your stops. So here it is. God uses a lamp when he wants to give me specific truth. Specific truth. I want you here. 
then I want you here. But then it becomes a light when God wants to give me general truth. Just generally speaking into my life, I've just come to know this by being a student of God's word. But let me, let me move to another statement. I can see now we're going to have a sermon to finish tonight. Verse 106. He said, I've sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgment. What you're going to show me, Lord, I, I'm going to keep those. I, I swear I'm going to do that. I, you know, the Bible says you shouldn't be making oaths. You shouldn't be swearing. And if you do, you ought to keep those oaths. Have you ever heard anybody say this? I'll tell you what. I want a preacher that practices what he preaches. Amen. If you've ever heard that saying before in your life, say, uh-huh. Well, what, what does a preacher say then? If, if the people want a preacher that practices what he preaches, what should a preacher want? I could say I want people that practice what the preacher preaches. Or I could say this. We were singing a moment ago. You may not have sung every song. Maybe all of them weren't your favorite. But you probably sang some of one of them, maybe. And maybe you didn't. That's all right if you didn't. But I wonder if we ought to uh, practice what we sing. Or are we just mouthing? Matter of fact, let me ask you something. Did we, did we make any commitments in the songs this morning? And see, you, we made all kinds of commitments just a moment ago. All kinds of commitments. But the question is, were we just singing? Matter of fact, I wrote down the words to one, asked that we sing it. L listen to this. This is my desire. And we sang, we sang it twice, to honor you. Oh, really? Is that your desire, to honor him? Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Can we say those words while we're thinking, what time's the game come on? What's for lunch? Hope he's not long-winded today. All that is within me, I give you praise with everything that's within me. All that I adore is in you. That's what we just sang. Now, doggone it, if I preach this week and you see me hypocritical in what I preach, somebody's going to hold me accountable. Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way with me. Wow. Now, I'm not the minister of music. But I'm the pastor that the Holy Ghost has placed here to watch for your soul. Can I hold you accountable to those words? How many of you let the offering plate pass and never gave a second thought about giving him anything and yet you're sitting there singing, I give you my all? How many of you have got a home and you even asked somebody to come over and dedicate it when you got it because you know it's a gift from God? You never thought about letting the God that gave it to you use it for his glory. What, what is this? Are we just a bunch of phonies? Is hypocrisy written all over our foreheads? I'm telling you, a lost world ought to be able to look at the church where God lives and if there's a need, the church ought to rise to the occasion. Because we're here for him. We sing songs like it's not about me, Jesus. It's all about you. And that is if the temperature is right. I'm freezing somebody, somebody. <laughs> I don't like that song. I like these kind of songs. He's too loud. Speak up louder. Quit sweating. Wipe your forehead. And while we're saying that, and it is humorous, there's a world perishing, perishing without God, perishing without God. And we're saying, we've got a word that lights my path. That lamp causes me to pick up the phone and call people. The lamp causes me to make visits and to share with people. The lamp causes me to give. The lamp causes me to go. The lamp causes me to pray. 
And I don't always know what the end results is going to be. But I'm going to follow what he shows me in his word. Is his word a lamp to your feet? Light to your path? I've preached one-fourth of the sermon I prepared for this morning. I knew I'd get stuck here because that verse, everybody knows it. It's like the John 3, 16 of the Old Testament. But we need to obey it. Heavenly Father, draw us to yourself. There's people here that need to make decisions. But the church, by and large, oftentimes makes decisions like unbelievers without the influence of thy word. Our path is not clearly lit as to where we ought to be going, what we ought to be doing with our resources, with our time, with our talents, the way we ought to be caring. It's not really lit because the Word really isn't influencing us. But I pray that that would change in all of our lives. May it intensify in my own. Forgive me for the times I've read it and knew to obey it and, and volitionally chose to say no. In Jesus' name, amen.